Okay, so today we're looking at the poem Old Ironsides by Oliver Wendell Holmes. So this poem is so cool for a couple of different reasons. One, it's a, it was written about the USS Constitution. So the Constitution was commissioned in 1794 and it earned the nickname Old Ironsides because it was unsinkable. It oversaw hundreds of naval victories between uh, the War of 1812 and some skirmishes before. And it um, was set to be dismantled and they were gonna use, use strip it down for parts basically. Well, Oliver Wendell Holmes read about that in the newspaper and he wrote this as an ode. Odes typically, they're full of praise, solemn in tone or subject matter, and they have a formal meter or structure. We're gonna come back to that. But the poem was so popular that uh, they decided they couldn't dis dismantle it. They couldn't dissemble the parts. And the USS Constitution still sails today. It's the oldest commissioned ship in the world. So this is just another case of poetry influencing the course of history. So we're going to get into it. The poem, uh, we're going to look at it in three parts. There are three eight-line stanzas. So we'll look at a part at a time and then explicate it. So here goes. I tear her tattered ensign down, long has it waved on high. And many an eye has danced to see that banner in the sky. Beneath it rung the battle shout and burst the cannon roar. The meteor of the ocean air shall sweep the clouds no more. Okay, let's comprehend it before we analyze it. What's happening? First of all, we have a synecdoche right off the bat. Tear her tattered ensign down. A synecdoche is a really special metaphor where a part stands in for a whole. So the ensign is the flag of a ship, the flag, it's the meteor of the ocean air because it flies through the air. Um, and that represents the whole. So tearing down the flag represents destroying the ship. That's a synecdoche. So tear her tattered ensign down. What's going on? The speaker is addressing those responsible for the dismantling of the constitution. I, he starts as an affirmative, go ahead, go ahead and destroy the flag that so many people have fought under. Um, so he's, it's a sarcastic permission. Go ahead and do this thing. Take away the meteor of the ocean air. Her deck, once red with hero's blood, where knelt the vanquished foe. When winds were hurrying over the flood and waves were white below, no more shall feel the victor's tread or know the conquered knee. The harpies of the shore shall pluck the eagle of the sea. Okay, so first thing up uh, is the explication. When you destroy her, you're going to be destroying a ship that knew such glory on the ocean. Um, we had the victors tread over the conquered knee, and it was red with hero's blood. So it was this glorious oceanic vessel that we're going to be destroying. But one key uh, device that the poet is using here is contrast. So we're contrasting heroes and the vanquished, winds and waves, um, the victor and the conquered. But finally, the most important contrast, the harpies of the shore versus the eagle of the sea. Now, we know the eagle of the sea is the, is the USS Constitution. Um, now, that leaves the question, who are the harpies of the shore? Interestingly enough here, um, the harpies are an allusion to this myth mythological creature in Greece. Uh, they were this disgusting sort of um, half bird, half human uh, hybrid that were the hunters of hell. So they brought people who had escaped from Hades back to Hades. They were vicious. They were disgusting. They were evil. Um, so think of all of the connotations we have for an eagle. Good proud, majestic, represents America. And now we're contrasting that with the harpies who would pluck this eagle from, from the sea. So who are the harpies of the shore? It's an interesting question. Oh, better that her shattered hulk should sink beneath the wave. Her thunders shook the mighty deep and there should be her grave. Nailed to the mast, her holy flag, set every threadbare sail, and give her to the god of storms, the lightning and the gale. All right, so here the speaker is proposing an alternative. Look, don't strip away the mast, don't tear her tattered ensign down. 
rather nail her mast up or nail her holy flag to the mast and give her to the sea. Rig her up and ready to sail and send her unmanned into the ocean. Give her to the god of storms. Why? Well, because the ship had its glory on the ocean. Her thunders shook the mighty deep, so there should be her grave. All right, so an ode. What is an ode? Let's do some genre criticism. Full of praise, solemn tone, or subject matter, and with a formal meter. Does this poem qualify? Well, is it full of praise? I'd say so. The meteor of the ocean air and the eagle of the sea. These are two metaphors used to describe the USS Constitution. So really good poets, they use their metaphor um, to serve something else. So obviously a metaphor, a comparison of two things uh, without using like or as. And the way you do that is you, you say that it is something but we know you really just mean it has the quality. So it is the meteor of the ocean air. It's not actually a meteor, but it has the qualities of a meteor, the qualities of an eagle. It is the eagle of the sea. Um, and he's using those metaphors to praise the USS Constitution. Um, meteors are awesome. So are eagles. Therefore, the, so is old Ironsides. All right. Solomon subject matter. It's literally proposing a funeral. The ship wasn't going to get a funeral. It was going to be just destroyed and stripped down for parts. So it's saying, hey, no, we need a funeral. We need a special funeral, a Viking funeral. Send it out into the, into the waves, into the lightning and the gale. Um, so yeah, in that way, it's incredibly solemn in subject matter um, because the ship deserves a funeral worthy of its glorious life. What about a formal meter? Well, so the poem alternates lines of iambic tetrameter and iambic trimeter. We're not going to go over how to identify meter in this video, but it, it does have a formal meter and a formal rhyme scheme as well. So all in all, this ticks all the boxes of an ode. A couple more things to think about. Did the poem conjure the glory of a victorious ship in battle? That was the crux of the poem's argument, was that a glorious life that this ship lived it doesn't deserve such an inglorious death. So did it conjure that? Did it conjure that um, glory? If it did, can you go and leave a comment down below? Tell me how the poem conjured that the glory of the victorious ship in battle. This is good analysis when you tell us how a poem does something. Does some form of glory entitle us to special treatment? Does how we lived our life in the past Entitle how people or change how people should treat us in the present? Can we earn immortality? Um, the speaker of the poet seems to say yes, at least for the for old Ironsides, but it's a fair question. Um, so this has been Old Ironsides by Oliver Wendell Holmes.